DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suba. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Hello, Dr. Fiji. In this bulletin, Rambuka's reconciliation effort had hidden agenda, says PM. Slowdown in neighbouring economies will affect tourism and inshore fishing licence term increased. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nair. Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Morama has stated that opposition leader Siti Vini Rambuka came with a hidden agenda by trying to reconcile him with NFP President Piyoti Kondondua. Mani Marama says the speaker has already made efforts for reconciliation in which he had already offered his apology. However, Tikunduandua refused to meet with them on the day of the alleged altercation. Ali Kimbia with the story. In response to questions asked by FBC News after appearing to the Privileges Committee today, Mani Marama says he knew that Trumbuka had an agenda when meeting with him. But I knew what his hidden agenda was. He wants to be seen as a as a yes, as a as a statement, yeah. But I don't think the other three knew what his agenda was. Bani Marama says Rambuka approached him for a meeting along with Ratusiliano Matani Tumbua and Rotemu Mukepa. The Prime Minister says there is no need for Rambuka to push for the idea of reconciliation. Rambuka had said that one uh, level of but I couldn't figure out what they wanted. Uh, so we sat down and had a meeting. And all he wanted was uh, for me to say yes to, to uh, reconciliation. And I told him that uh, there was no need for him to come and say that because that was done by the speaker uh, and we can do that again. Rambuka confirmed yesterday as the former head of the Fiji military forces, he had attempted reconciliation between Prime Minister Vurengi Mbaini Marama and National Federation Party MP Pioti Kundu Andua. Rambuka had also earlier said that the Speaker of the House had erred when he called for the Privileges Committee to convene. He also wrote to the Speaker saying that the Attorney General shouldn't be part of the committee as I asked said Kayum had made public statements on the matter. Said Kayum recused himself from the committee. However, Rambuka changed his tune yesterday and wanted to be part of the committee, but this was strongly opposed by government and was replaced by Moses Mbulitabu, Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Privileges Committee was last night still deliberating on the issue regarding Prime Minister Voreng and Baini Morama and opposition MP Pioti Kondondua. When approached by FBC News yesterday, Pioti Kondondua said he is bound by the standing orders and cannot comment on the issue that is before the committee. This is not concluded, we have not done. Okay, can, can you accept that? Because I'm bound by standing orders, you know? Yes. Uh, I have not made it. I want to correct that I have not made any statements to fix that. And committee chair Veena Bhatnagar has uh, also, excuse me, also had little to share about the proceedings. We are still deliberating and after we finish, then we'll talk The Privileges Committee will table its report in Parliament today. Minister for Economy A.S. Sayed Kayum has made the government stand clear that there will be no deal with Pesa Plus on Fiji's mahogany. Following a question by Sodelpa MP William Ngavoka on why government is dragging on uh, the agreement, Sayed Kayum says government wants to look after Fijian businesses because Pesa Plus could lead to job losses. Apanisa Wangai Rondovu reports. Business as usual, Ngavoka was keen to know why New Zealand has stopped buying Fiji mahogany and suggested Pesa Plus the Regional Development Centred Trade Agreement with Australia should get involved. The Minister for Economy in response told Ngavoka that he needs to read the fine print of PESA Plus. Because if he reads the fine print of PESA Plus, it will demonstrate and show him that Fiji will in a way be giving away a lot of our sovereign capacity to be able to raise revenue, to be able to control our trade. The Minister also stated that Fiji has been doing well in the mahogany market and claims regarding New Zealand pulling out as a buyer cannot be made at this stage. Mr. Speaker, so in 2016, New Zealand bought 741.96 cubic meters of mahogany from Fiji. 
In 2017, they bought 385.33 cubic meters of, uh, of mahogany from Fiji, and uh, last year, 373.34 cubic meters of mahogany. So obviously, Mr. Speaker, sir, if the honorable member, like I was saying, is talking about 2019, 2019 has not yet finished. Fiji has some of the world's largest planted forests of mahogany. In 2018, Fiji exported a total volume of 3.19 million cubic meters of the valuable wood with a value of $5.8 million. Apenisa Wangrandovu, FBC News. Minister for Economy A.S.A. Kayum says past government's lack of inclusion towards Monosavu landowners has been corrected by the Mbani Marama government. Sayed Kayum highlighted that the Monosavu landowners did not get a fair deal when approached by the then go Alliance government for the use of their resources when the Monosavu hydro dam was built. Sayed Kayum adds the landowners were not adequately compensated. So Delpa MP Aseri Randondo had posed a question wanting to know what returns the landowners were getting for the use of their resources by Energy Fiji Limited. They are paid 60 cents per megawatt per hour is paid to TLTB for landowners in the generation of electricity. And again, Mr. Speaker, that relates to Monosavu. Again, royalty payments are paid in respect of Nandari Batu. So I would urge the member, honorable members, please don't misrepresent back. These types of payments weren't made before. If the New Zealand and Australian economy slows down significantly, it can impact our tourism industry. Speaking on the global economy, Minister Responsible Aya Sayed Kayum says both countries account for more than 60% of our tourism arrivals. Sayed Kayum says the Australian dollar has hit its lowest since 2009 and if it falls further, while the Fijian dollar remains at the same value, Fiji's tourism sector will be affected. It will mean that we need to take certain measures. The, ho the hospitality industry, the tourism sector needs to take various measures to be able to mitigate against those types of risks. Thorough examinations will be done before a ferry service license is given to operators. Waterways Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy explained a lot of work is needed for this. Opposition MP Rote Mumu Kepa had questioned if there are plans to uh, provide licenses for ferry services in the Suvanosori corridor. Waterways Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says a lot of logistics need to be looked at before a license is granted. There are other things that need to be done, uh, for example, dredging of you know, the you know, um, uh, foreshore here as well to allow for ferry to pass through. So uh, we need to examine that and of course uh, identify the channel and the routes that the, the ferry will travel and where uh, it will travel uh, uh, in a river. Then we'll have to ensure that you know, we uh, stabilize the banks and which, how far from the bank the, the ferry will, will pass through. That those are important things. So we will need to examine that before uh, that license will be given for the ferry to operate. The Ministry of Fisheries has increased the inshore fishing license term to three years. This was confirmed by Minister for Fisheries, Simi Koroila Visau, who says the initial term was one year. Koroila Visau says inshore fishing contributes to the Fijian economy in terms of domestic food supply and generating income. It's basically a license that I paid to the Ministry of Fisheries to ensure security of tenwa to the, uh, to the fishermen, which basically indicate with the increase of licenses from one year to three years, we'll give them a more security of their licenses being used during that period. Coming up, flying Fijians focused on wallabies and massive task for Nandi in Premier League. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moiviti. Welcome back. Ensuring that players remain focused on their objective for the 2019 Rugby World Cup will be critical for the Flying Fijians coaching staff. Some overseas media have tipped Fiji to cause major upsets at the World Cup, especially against the Wallabies in pool stages. 
Now, there's a lot of talk about the Wallabies, but for us, there's four games in our pool, and they're all critical. Now, for us, the boys are really clear on if we if we prepare well and we deliver on the days, you know, an upset could be on the cards. But for us, it's really around preparing better than any Fijian team has done before, and de delivering consistently. Mistakes made against Brisbane City can't be repeated, says Fiji Airways Fiji uh, Ndrua prop Chueli Veteaki. Veteaki says Brisbane studied Fiji's style of rugby very well from the matches played last year. Fiji Ndrua drew against Brisbane City 22 all in their first National Rugby Championship match last Saturday. Veteaki scored one of Fiji's three tries in the draw. He says City tried to shut down Fiji's offloads. We are trying to just to control our offloads now. Since all the team are trying to spoil our open rugby uh, and just to do the offloads in the, in the right time. And uh, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, just try to balance, balance it. Fiji will host the Western Force at 3 p.m. this Saturday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Now the football president, Javed Ahmed, says the team has been in good form in the recent past. Ahmed says the win against Rewa and Nasinu were icing on the cake. However, the challenge now is to try and topple Suva. He says they will be anticipating a tough encounter against the capital city side this Saturday and home ground will be a benefit to them. Suva is a, is a well-drilled side. You know, they, they have been very impressive this year. I think they were a bit unlucky in the, in the second time. Uh, and, and they've done really well, uh, played um, the Fiji Tech final. We've had some tough battles against them this year. Uh, I think we lost them in the first round at the National Stadium. Uh, so they'll be a tough team to play. And we're looking forward to it, uh, looking forward to a tough battle. Nandi will host Suva at 7 p.m. this Saturday at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Mostly fine conditions are forecast for the Fiji group, apart from cloudy conditions in Suva and Savu Savu. And that's your FBC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. I'm Shamiza and I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulalobak. And we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. Hi, my name is Shagar Reddy. I'm from Nandi. I love listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Shagar Reddy. I'm from school. I'm from the house. And I'm from the house. 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 Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM. It's hot.